Okay, in this video I'm going to go over abrading. Um, I don't abrade very much. I think the main reason is because on the real artifacts there isn't very much evidence for abrading. I was doing some reading last night and uh, some of the paleo points are heavily abraded before uh, in preparation for a flake removal. Um, it's especially true of the Folsom type points and uh, I thought it was also true of the of the uh, Clovis type points as well and, and correct me if I'm wrong but at least out here out west the uh, Clovis points a lot of times were flaked uh, from beveled edges and not ground edges and what that means is just create an edge that's it's got the right angle just by beveling striking off short flakes and creating that angle just by beveling and from there you can strike and remove flakes but this is going to be about abrading and um, the way I do it's a little bit different like I said what I do is I use a rounded abrader either this handheld one or my abrading stone down here uh, both have rounded surfaces <clears throat> and the reason for that is uh, when you abrade with a rounded object, it's going to follow the contour of your edge. It's going to go up and down, up and down with the contours. And it's going to take off a lot more of the weak areas and leave the strong areas standing. So as I do this, you can see that the parts remaining are actually points that are desirable to hit with the uh, indirect percussion tool. And it does it automatically for you. That's why I go down the entire edge. Because uh, it'll prepare your entire edge and get those points set up for, for striking. Whereas if I were to use a flat abrader, this is just a piece of cinder block. If I were to use a flat abrader and abrade across, it's going to look pretty flat when you're done. You will be able to see areas that you can strike with the percussion tool, but they won't be as pronounced. And they may be harder to remove because what you're doing is you're you're wearing down the strong spots and putting the strong spots at the same level as the weak spots. Uh, instead of you know isolating the strong spots, you're bringing the strong, the strong spots down. So if you're using a flat flaker, I mean a flat abrader, you're going to create a, a flat edge which is not desirable. Now you can abrade small areas and that's what most guys do. They abrade small areas and strike and then they abrade another small area and they don't grind the whole entire edge with the flat abrader. Uh, just for that reason because you really don't want to flatten the whole edge. But when you take a rounded abrader and you go over the entire edge it will knock off the weak spots and leave the strong spots. And it just saves me some time. And I don't have to think about it too much. I just brush or walk back and forth. Or I can even go down to the, uh, the larger stone and drag back and forth, back and forth across the edge like this. That sends chips going that way and going this way, but it leaves the strongest areas pronounced. So a, a lot of times you do a combination of both. You know, with the smaller braider and the larger braider on the same edge. You can scratch with this as well. You know, the same scratching maneuver I was doing with this you can do with the uh, braiding stone. And my my braiding stones happen to be my hammer stones as well. Cuts down on the number of tools that I have. I'm going to strike a couple of these platforms. It's got a lot of mass and it's heat treated, which means it's going to be difficult for me to remove large flakes. The, uh, the material itself is a little bit soft after heating. 
So I have to make sure, doubly sure that the platforms are strong. And I'm not too aggressive because if I am, it's just going to create a uh, depression. It's not going to take a flake off. It's going to be a little fat depression down in there. Anyway. See what we can do here. I'll just take a few of these off and uh, see what it looks like. I think this is the spot I was talking about before. See, I was a little bit too aggressive, so it just kind of dipped. Didn't run across the top of that. I could take another opportunistic flake. I guess I could take it here and see what happens. There's not enough of an edge to catch that. So, just continue to look around for areas where you can hit. And once you make your pass around the point and strike off those areas that prepared, you do the same thing again. Just take out your braiding still. Braid the edge. Go back and forth across the, the edge, removing weak spots and thin areas. Now, a lot of a lot of people, when they first start, uh, have have trouble getting into the habit of uh, abrading, and I'm I'm one of those. I, I hardly ever put any importance on abrading. I just maybe once in a while I'll come down to my large braiding stone and abrade a little bit. But uh, I'm working now more with heat treated stone, and with this type of stone, abrading is much more important. It's also important with obsidian and anything that's cooked or heat treated because you, you are going to need strong platforms. You are going to need to take time and prepare a beveled edge with a proper angle or take time in a braid. Now since I think this is faster for me, I normally just abrade, but on the actual artifacts I don't think there was much abrading like this going on. I think most of the uh, platforms were set up by beveling, either by striking with this hammer stone lightly, or with a, some kind of a percussion tool, or even a pressure tool. It's uh, very possible that these could be set up and prepared with pressure and then struck with percussion to thin it out, and then finished off with pressure later. So let's see if we can take off some more mass here. So abrading is very important. It's important that you get into the habit of abrading. I know sometimes it can be tedious. You really don't want to stop what you're doing and have it to abrade and then forget where you were before. But after a while you get used to it and you hold that thought in your brain of where you want it to hit and just come back to it. This is quite a turtle back, so it's going to take quite a few attempts, and I'm going to probably lose a lot of width. The uh, the edge here is a little bit too too acute. I'm going to have to take it down. Uh, I'm going to put a bevel on here. Uh, notice I'm not being aggressive at all with it. I'm just kind of barely grazing it. It'll take a flake off at the right angle, at the correct angle. I think that's good enough for me to hit right there. Draw my glasses. Okay. That was okay. There's still a lot to go, but I think you get the idea.